Hello, welcome back to my channel, I'm Shaw Wizard. I'm going to be continuing the Grain Dryer M Company scripted factory building here. Uh, difficult to know what they call these things. Production, I guess it would be. Grain Dryer Production. Grain, I don't know, dry grain production. Anyway, whatever. Um, in part one, obviously, we put all the parts together, created or took a a mod that was already put together and then deleted all the parts that I didn't really need uh, added in the prefab buildings um, and then just joined everything together I've actually done this uh, other pipe here I'm sure that that's not how it would work but you know um, you guys can put something better together than I have here uh, I just wanted to get something that you know resembled something at least where the grain would be going the kind of um, route that it would take so from here we would tip the grain into the uh, auger here, or whatever you want to call that, the hopper. It would go through to the building, and then um, go in through all these pipes here, then up through the unit, and so on and so on, and then come down once it's been dried, and then enter into the storage unit here for us to then take it and either sell it or um, use it in some other production or factory or whatever. So next thing then, what we want to look at is join all the parts together to actually give it give it the actual function um, that we want to get out of it so um, because we've got all the triggers and everything from the uh, seed master that I took the uh, basis uh, the basics from I guess the actual structure of the the mod from uh, we can just literally move them wherever we need to put them and then rescale and whatever else as we need to so we've got our tip trigger with our information here for our input now obviously this has got uh, several different parts in here I've already renamed the um, some of these parts I think or I might not have done I can't remember now but uh, I'm going to go through these anyway and just um, see where we end up so this is uh, 10,000 so let's make that 100,000 for the capacity that'll be fine for now We've got wheat, barley. I don't particularly want maize uh, or rape in there. If your map um, that you're going to put this in potentially had uh, something like oat, rye, then I might add that in as well. But for now, I'm just going to stick with the wheat and the barley um, and then get a processed grain, a dried grain as my output. So uh, let's uh, see what we have here. So we have our tip trigger like so and it's important that you move the trigger as a whole in the transform group because it has the start and end points as well as the trigger itself you might need to manipulate some parts um, to you know once you start scaling stuff to the size that you want it to be and all the rest of it it just depends really uh, you might need to rotate some stuff and whatever else but just you know work with that and get it to the size of the uh, get the trigger to the size you want it to be um, and then you know go from there and if you have to mess around with start and end points and all that then do so so I'm just going to have it something like that give me a good uh, area that I can come in here with my tipper trailers um, and you want to give yourself a bit of room for like larger trailers as well as smaller trailers and whatever else uh, if you so choose to use the larger stuff you don't want to have a really small trigger that you can't get to with a bigger trailer and then we can just check our start and end points and make sure that they are where they need to be and that's perfectly fine I can go with that and then we have our shovel target so potentially I could come over here with a wheel loader or whatever else front loader telehandler whatever and then tip it in manually and again I would say to make the uh, shovel target trigger slightly larger than you actually need it to be uh, simply because uh, you don't really want to come in here and then end up tipping loads of grain all over the ground because if it sees the trigger it will obviously do its job and it will then go into the actual mod itself but if you if it doesn't see the tr trigger potentially it will tip it all over the ground um, and then you won't be able to pick it up again because it will be these parts will all be collidable so you won't be able to get to it so I'll just make it slightly larger than it need to be and then put it down to the ground so that it's not going to um, because it's going to be a collision 
uh, if you don't put it down to the ground you'll be able to drive into it so if it's if it's up here and then you know really big like this for example if I come in here with my tractor and trailer or whatever I, I'm actually going to physically hit this because it is actually a collision so I don't really want that so depending on the size that you scale it to you best to put it down as low as you can into the ground uh, so that you know you're not going to run into it or whatever else but make it big enough that um, like I say you can also comfortably tip in the area without it spilling it all over the ground um, and then not being able to pick it up now obviously as a giant set to import once I get it into the map I can then paint down my tip coal around certain areas of the building so that it would it would prevent me from doing that anyway um, but uh, I always like to have the tip trigger the shovel the shovel target trigger just larger than it needs to be especially when you're working with something like this because the uh, bucket or the shovel on my wheel load is going to be much much bigger than this um, hopper header or whatever you want to call that the opening in the hopper here so um, it potentially would go outside if I made the trigger only the size of that so making it much larger just prevents a lot of mess on the ground I guess so that's that one we've got the tip trigger and the shovel target in the right place as for displays again you know you can put them wherever you see fit to do so uh, probably would um, bring it out and then maybe put it somewhere up against the side of the building here so that uh, I would be able to see what I've got in this in the uh, on the input side of this particular setup so something like that will do just fine and I can then look at that to see what what I've got on the input side uh, if you can hear some banging in the background uh, people are letting fireworks off around here at the moment so I apologize for that but uh, never mind uh, we'll move on so right uh, let's do the uh, silo trigger I always tend to um, potentially move stuff individually where I can I don't like moving like the main transform groups I like to have them at zero uh, as you can see in the attributes here and then just move the individual parts within uh, it's just a personal preference but if you wanted to grab the whole thing and move that as one then you know do so but as for like displays and stuff like you'll have to move those individually anyway so I will just go with you know just moving stuff as you need to within there so again I'm going to move this over to the area here and position that somewhere underneath this pipe here if it will let me something like that I think will be alright might need to adjust it a little bit here and there just to get it somewhat central but that should be fine yeah that'll be okay don't want it sticking out the top there but uh, I want it to look like it's actually coming out of the pipe there um, so that should be fine there and then we've also inside this one got the automatic trigger which with the uh, fabric script and also the M company you can come into here and then in game it will um, give you the option to manual fill manual fill or automatic fill I uh, don't potentially need it to be quite as big as that so I might just make it slightly smaller something like that maybe would be more than enough and then just bring it over a little bit something like that but again that's something that can be adjusted as need as you need to uh, it's sometimes you, you you can position all of this stuff and think it's perfectly where it needs to be but um, once you get into game you might go into the trigger and something doesn't work and it needs a little bit of tweaking here and there but uh, we'll get to that later on so again with the displays uh, I've got a couple of displays here because we had the um, screen on the uh, seed master so I don't I don't need both of those I need this one 
for the output, but I don't need that one, I don't think. No, I don't need that one, so I can go ahead and delete that one. And then this one, again, I will just position somewhere uh, for the output side of things. Um, let's see. Doesn't really matter for this, uh, for the video, so to speak. You can position it wherever you need to. So for now, I'm just going to put it up against the side of the building over here. Something like that. There we go. That'll do for now. So I can see what I've got in the um, input and output there for the wheat and barley going in and then the dry grain obviously coming out of there. Then we have our interactive trigger. Now as an M company scripted mod, um, the trigger, if I go down the road of using M company graphic, I want the trigger to be quite large because I want to be able to come into any point around the building and get my information up. If that was not really the way you wanted to go and you only wanted to have perhaps maybe one spot somewhere within the unit that you would go to or uh, whatever else, this will be a personal preference sort of thing so you might only want it to be just on this side here or you might want it to be perhaps maybe just in front of the door here so you would per perhaps role play it a little bit and then say you're coming up to the to the door here and checking something information wise um, over here but uh, <clears throat> I want it to be relatively large over this side so I'm just going to make it a bit bigger here Something like that will be fine. And then I'll just expand that out. Something like that will be okay. And then I could come into that trigger. And like I say, if I have the M company graphic stuff set up, it will give me the information as to however I set that up. Might make it a little bit bigger that way. Something like that. There we go. That'll be fine. <clears throat> Like I say, all of this stuff can be adjusted. Once you, you know the mod works, then you can come back in and tweak certain things as you see, you, uh, you know, as you need to, to uh, get stuff working 100% the way you want it to. But getting it all working is, is the, uh, is the key thing here. Once it's working, you can tweak stuff later on. Okay, so let's move on to the next part then. I don't need um, the clear area because this, like I said before, is going to be a giant editor import. And the clear area is really to do with um, a placeable mod where it deletes the uh, foliage, uh, harvestable foliage like your grass or whatever else around the mod itself when you place it in game. So I'm not going to require that because again, uh, as a giant editor input, I can just delete any foliage or whatever else that might interfere with it manually within the giant editor. So I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need that. Uh, but if you do have something like that there, sometimes in your uh, user attributes for the main unit, it will say in here area or something like that. And if you don't delete that index um, or that uh, user attribute pointing towards that index, it will then cause a, an error to come up because it's looking for something that it can't find. And a perfect example of that is I've deleted the doors from the seed master because I didn't actually require them for this particular setup, but it has an attribute here for doors index. And if I was to leave that there, it'd be looking for index four, which would actually turn out to be um, my viz um, transform group. And it would then give me an error saying that that is not a um, an object that can be identified um, correctly as a, a, a moving index for the doors. So um, it would cause a conflict. So I need to delete that one, like I say, because otherwise it will be looking something looking for something that isn't set up correctly for it to work properly. So uh, I can go ahead and get rid of that one. Um, this one didn't have an areas. Uh, user attributes so that's good don't need to worry about that but all the other stuff there I can leave as it is your product per hour again that's something you know you need to experiment with a little bit and just see what you want to get out of it 
depending on the actual capacities uh, that you set up. So I've set this to a capacity of 100,000 for wheat and barley. Um, or wheat or barley, I should say. Not 100,000 for each. 100,000 for wheat or barley. Um, and then um, your output, you can set that to whatever, you know. So I might again say 100,000 for the output. And then I would change this to uh, whatever fill type I decide to set it up as. So uh, for this, I might uh, again just call it uh, dried grain, something like that. And then tab to lock that in. And then um, the actual name will link in here to the uh, mod desk. So I need to set that up. So again, um, you know, you can call it whatever you want here. So again, I might take that from there, paste that into there, and then do underscore, underscore um, DG, as in for dried grain, just so it kind of gives it a, a distinctive name so that the mod desk... Um, when you link it into the mod desk, it knows what you're looking for, what you're telling it to look for and whatever else. It just um, links it all in together correctly. And then we can just rename all the stuff here as we need to. So for this one, for example, I don't want it to be called that, obviously. So um, again, I can just go, go uh, grain dryer. And then this one input. And I'll just go uh, GD something like that and then for this one again I'm just going to call this um, grain GD that's fine and then this one I'll just do GD and then we can uh, done that one already and then the silo trigger here got to make sure that when you actually change your fill type for the product itself because we're working with a silo trigger that also needs to have the appropriate fill type because at the moment I'm setting up a fill type for the output product of dried grain but the silo will still give me the silo trigger I should say will still give me seeds because the separate attribute here for the fill type on that silo trigger is still set to seeds so I need to make sure that, that matches so I'm literally just going to copy it from here just so I don't spell it wrong and just paste it into there like so and hit tab and lock that in as well um, and then what I will do is also change all of these because uh, when I set up the automatic and manual trigger stuff to do with the actual script, I want to have um, an original kind of uh, naming here because if you have several different mods that all share the same text here, when you link it into the mod desk, um, it won't know if they're if if they're using different fill types or different information if i all ha if i have them all set to start fill st and stop fill st and so on and so on uh, this one will obviously be uh, droid grain so um, uh, but another one could be seeds for example so it won't know what to display so it'll get confused because it's asking i'm asking it to use exactly the same names in here to display two different lots of information so you need to make sure that you name this um, specific to the mod that you're creating and putting together okay so uh, that's all done there that's fine don't need to worry about any of those the effects obviously these need to be set up with a material holder which I'll get to later on and then the automatic trigger that's fine that's all linked in with the silo trigger here through the user attributes and the indexes and whatever else so that's all good we've done the displays there and whatever yes so all of that stuff is set up uh, work animations again um, I'm going to work with some different particle systems here because I want to set the fans up uh, in here so they actually rotate and then I'm going to have an exhauster fan over here which will be um, which will have like dust particles coming out or something like that and then I might put some sort of smoke or dust particles probably from here as well um, because all of this kind of links together so this exhauster fan here links in with this part here and then comes through into this building here. So um, you could say that that blower fan, the excess uh, um, air that's being created by the fan is being blown back through this pipe into this building and then exhausted out through there as well, just to prevent a buildup of dust in this particular building. 
or whatever, you know, just make it up as you go along to create whatever it is you want to create, you know. Um, so just use your imagination a little bit, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, for now. And then I'm going to close that one down. Um, once you've actually saved it and you're happy with all of the uh, add-on parts that you've brought into the mod itself, you can go ahead and delete the actual ice 3D and i3D shapes just to clean stuff up a little bit. So, because if you end up with like 20 different i3Ds in here, it can get a little bit confusing as to which one uh, you're meant to be working with, which is why I tried to, this one I named the way I have so that it separates it from this one somewhat so I can identify which one is which. Uh, so I'm going to basically take that, that and that and delete all of those. And I've just got my one I'm actually working with here uh, to build this grain dryer kind of um, end company setup. So I guess what I can do while I'm in this folder, I'm actually going to create another new folder here and I'll call this scripts. And then I can bring in the actual M company stuff. So I've got the M company, uh, M company add on, which is for the uh, automatic manual trigger function. And then also the reg fill type script, which will be required to actually register the droid grain um, and um, all the HUDs and everything else that will be set up will be linked in with this particular script. So that's fine there. And then what I want to do, if I move that one up there, I'm going to go back to the actual original prefab model. Um, and then what I want to do here is take the fans, which are static at the moment, but I'm going to uh, kind of fool them into thinking that they are moving objects by using a shader to give that illusion. So I'm going to just take one of the small ones and one, this big one over here. And then I can have a mess around with those in their separate I3Ds. So I'm going to just grab that one there. And I'm going to make a copy of that name. And I'll export selection. And I'm going to actually put these in a separate folder to start with. So that I can work with them without interfering with anything else I'm doing. Um, and then once I'm actually happy with it, I can um, bring it over to the main, uh, the actual main mod. Uh, for the grain dryer system. So we'll take this one as well, the fan big. So I'm going to make a copy of that. Export selection with files. And I'll go to the folder that I just set up. So here. And I'll paste that one in as well. And save. And that's fine. So we can close that down again now then. Um, get rid of that. So I now have the folder here. And it's automatically, because I kept the parent directory structure, it's put all the parts in the appropriate places for the shaders and everything else. But I'm going to be changing some of those parts because you can only have one shader applied to um, each object. So I can't use multiple shaders on one object, at least not that I know of. Um, and because this particular uh, building setup is using the building US shader, it's actually using a a variation of the force gloss second UV. Uh, so I can't have that and another shader, which is what is going to give me the illusion of them rotating, uh, running together. So I'm going to have to delete that one from the fans and then apply a different shader. So if I actually open this one up, that's fine. We'll do this one first. So if I actually look at this fan, at the moment, as you can see, it's completely static. It doesn't do anything at all. Just, you know, it looks good, but uh, I want it to actually rotate, like I say, to give me an illusion that it's actually doing something. So if I close down the user attributes window and I open up the material editing window, if we come down to custom shader, you can see here that it's using the building US XML shader, and then it's got this force gloss second UV which gives it this kind of like uh, um, these edges here, the darker edges and whatever else. If I actually click none, you can see it goes all like that because it's using a different UV to create a different mapping on the actual object. Uh, but um, that's fine. I don't, that, that's not really going to be an issue um, because it's going to be spinning. So uh, I'm not going to really see that too much anyway. That's fine. 
looks okay to me. So um, what I'm going to do then is actually delete that shader entirely, which will then just give me this. So that looks fine to me. So what I can do then is actually use uh, another shader to, like I say, make this rotate. So I'll grab that shader and then we'll continue on. So the shader that I'm actually going to use is the mesh rotate shader because this uh, is actually a mesh. That's what it's called. Uh, you know, think of it as an object, but it's actually a mesh that's been created in a 3D application, 3D modeling application that's what it's referred to so this particular shader will make this mesh this object rotate or it will make it give it the illusion that it's actually rotating if that makes sense so we have some different parameters in here that can be applied uh, to, to make it do various different things that we'll get to a little bit later on for the actual uh, mod itself but uh, for now, I can apply this shader within the Giants Editor session and then show you what I mean for the actual how it rotates. So if we come back down to custom shader here where I deleted the uh, building US shader and I click on this replace or add new shader button here and then come to the correct folder shaders and I select my mesh rotate shader. You can see now that it's actually rotating this mesh but it's doing it on the wrong axes. So I need to change some numbers here to make it rotate on the correct axis. And this is basically X, Y, and Z. So if I make that one a zero, and then I'm going to go, let's do, well, you, you kind of just have to um, pick one of these and figure out which one is the correct one, I guess. Um, I've never been able to get, I've, I've always looked at it and gone, oh yeah, it's that one, and then it rotates in the wrong direction. So, um, just put a one in each, a one in the X or the Y or the Z and see which way it rotates and then you should be good. And then on the actual, um, this one over here is the speed that you want it to rotate at. So if I put a two in there, for example, it rotates faster. If I put a three in there, again, obviously it's going to rotate faster. So um, just change that number to whatever you need to to get the speed that you want it to get the rotation. And uh, the other thing is if you want it, like this is obviously rotating anti-clockwise at the moment, but the way I want this to work is I want it to draw the air into the actual dryer itself. So I want it to rotate in the opposite direction. So under the speed setting here, all I do there is I literally just put a negative in the in front of the number and now it will change the direction of rotation so pretty straightforward um, you could also if you really wanted to um, I prefer it so that the actual gizmo the axes are set up this particular way but uh, you could just rotate the entire object around so um, it just rotates in a different direction when you're looking at it so for example if I wanted to here uh, looking at it from this way I could just rotate the entire object round and now it's rotating in a different direction. But depending on the object itself, that might not necessarily be possible uh, because by rotating it in the opposite direction, it might, the shape of the actual object might not allow you to do that. So it's just easier to use the uh, variation speed here and just adapt it to whatever you want to get out of it by either putting a negative or keeping it as a, as a positive for the direction. So that's now set up as far as I can do here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this um, and then close that one down. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the larger fan. So we'll open this one up. But again, uh, with this one, I want that to actually rotate in the anti-clockwise direction because this is going to be an exhauster fan. So when I place it into the unit, I want it to go anti-clockwise. So it's drawing the air out of the out of the unit so I'm going to come down to the shaders again delete the building shader because I don't need that one and then I'm going to apply the mesh rotate shader change the uh, axes that it's going to rotate on so I put that one to zero and that one to one and then this one because it's a, a larger fan potentially I would have this one spinning somewhat slower because it's larger it can draw a larger 
uh, volume of air so it doesn't need to spin as fast so have the smaller one spin faster um, but the larger one spin slightly slower or however you want to set it up you might want to have them spinning ridiculously fast but um, I think this one this would look possibly better uh, and represent more real life kind of scenario uh, so that's all now set up in there so I can go ahead and save that as well and we'll close that down so now that I know I have the appropriate parts all set up in this uh, i3d setup I'm comfortable to bring it into my actual uh, setup here and I like to do everything in separate i3ds and separate folders so if it all goes totally wrong I can literally just delete everything and start again without uh, on you know on a smaller scale than having to delete everything I've just done for the grain dryer build and having to start that again that would be very annoying so I just like to have it you know in this kind of setup uh, and for this I can literally just take all of this and move it over into there and just merge all the folders I've already got that so I don't need that one don't need that don't need that and there we go so I can now get rid of that and then just delete that folder because I don't need that anymore and then it's just a case of bringing them into the mod itself and putting them wherever we, wherever we need to do so I'm going to actually uh, do that in the next part the next video so um, I'm Shell Wizard thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one